So how do you actually design some hinges? Today we're gonna go through that and probably show you some hinge designs that you've never seen before. So hinges are pretty darn useful, but they're actually quite challenging to do inside of 3D printing because you have to deal with orientation as well as the strength of the hinge. So we're gonna start with kind of the least complex going up to the most complex types of hinges and how they can be useful and in what context they can be used. And let's go ahead and start with the very simplest, a simple flat sheet compliant hinge. Now this is something that has to be printed directly against the bed. You're using the flexibility of the material to do it. Now the challenge with this is that since it is flexible, you need to be very cognizant of the material that you're using. This is PLA. PLA, when it bends past a certain point, will basically just snap. So if you're not careful, you can end up with a kink in your hinge that will never come out again. And then eventually it'll wear out. This is generally best for PET-G or again, if you made that really long to where there's a big old loop that it can make, then it can work with PLA. But this hinge is really simple to create and is good for just kind of joining two parts. You can actually use this type of hinge as a consumable too, just make it really small so that all the parts come off the bed together and then people can basically bend and break them off. This is really good if you're planning to upload them to like a service or something like that, because it can improve the overall adhesion of the piece. Rather than having this one come unstuck over here and this one keep on printing, they both are kind of linked to each other, so it's all a failure or everything is good. But how would you improve this hinge if you wanted to take it even further? Well, there's this type of hinge that is used in woodworking in order to allow the wood to twist to create hinges and joints and curves. And what this does is it gives you a lot more ability to create tight corners with a lot less material so that you don't have to create a big old long sheet that is able to bend. And the way you design this, you basically just cut out a lot of slots so that each one of these individual sprues is able to twist and then you create the hinge that you want there. These are really, really useful. They're a little bit difficult to model compared to some of the others, but they're really great for simple compliant hinges that are also really reliable, really robust, and can be gone through a whole mess of cycles without causing an issue. Okay, now let's get into more kind of traditional mechanical hinges. Well, one of the easiest ones is just a simple mechanical linkage. You have a loop and you have a solid rod going through the middle. Now, the trick with this is that it does have to be printed in this orientation. This orientation is super important because you need that center pin inside of there that is the crossbar. You want that to be in the plane of the layers because if we print it like this, it's no longer in the plane of the layers. So it could potentially break off if you just have a central hinge because it'll tear out through the layers. Now there's ways of dealing with that and we'll get to that here in another couple hinges but whenever doing this sort of hinge you want to print it effectively horizontally and we've done demos of enclosures and boxes that use this style of hinge before there's a lot of leeway with it and it can work fine but the biggest thing with this also is to just make sure it's chunky some people try to make this really small and really fine and really petite and what you end up is having the outer loops break off so whenever using one of these types of mechanical hinges just make sure that you're making it beefy enough to compensate for the inner layer adhesion it doesn't cause a problem it's just the design style that you have to follow and you can create a really good reliable hinge but just make sure it's printed horizontally so that everything is as strong as it can possibly be but Gabe what if I don't want to print it like that what if I do have a box and I need to print it up on edge well now you can use one of the more unique sort of hinges this hinge is basically a cone shaped hinge you can see that even though it's level there I can't actually pull it out of the hole that it's inside of and the reason for that is that the inside of this actually splays out and is coned so that it's all print in place, but you still have freedom of motion and no side travel. So this hinge actually can be printed vertically with both sides flat on the bed. It's still all retained. It's still all constrained. It's held together, but you get really good free flow motion in the vertical. Now, the issue with this is, is that this is a weaker hinge. Right now, all the layer lines are like this. So if I twist really hard right here, I can potentially break off this hinge. But again, if you make it large and chunky, you can compensate for that a little bit. And there's one more hinge type that is actually way better at getting this done. That hinge type is this one right here. This hinge is basically two cones on the top and on the bottom. And what this allows you to do is create a really robust contact point that doesn't have leverage. This can break off because there's a lot of leverage on that arm. All of the force from down here is applied up here so you can break right at that corner up here at the top. But this one doesn't have a lever arm on it. The cones going into it are only about a couple millimeters or so. So you have a lot of motion and a lot of strength here and you're never gonna break this off. Now the challenge with this type of a hinge now is since it's not constrained the way this one is, this is a cone going up to the top and it's free. This one doesn't really have any overhangs that are an issue. 
This one has overhangs that are an issue and can cause fusing inside of the part. Even right here, you can kind of see the messiness because the top loop has to settle onto this bottom loop. And that causes an issue because now you have the material kind of falling down onto the other one so that one link of the hinge kind of acts as support for the other link of the hinge. This is not the end of the world, but it's not very robust. So there's a few things that you can do to kind of readjust around this. The way of doing that is basically taking this hinge and then just making the second half of it so that you have cone and then back up and then cone again. This way you are able to create something that doesn't really have the overhangs because everything blends into itself. And even though you have that center spiral, it can't break off because you have that baseline chamfered and really strong and reliable. So it's kind of a hybrid of this just standard one which is cones on top and then a center area and then a bottom. You actually connect to those two top cones so it's a lot easier. The other thing that you can do in order to to refine this even more is to put one cone on the bottom and then one cone on the top of the other link. This way you have nothing falling down onto the print at all. It's all just perfect vertical roofs that are a lot more reliable to print with. And the one other option is to again change orientation. This hinge right here has the top link falling down on the bottom. This hinge is this hinge but printed on its side. This allows you to now put those cones in plane. And since those cones are inside of there and they're cones, they have no overhang again. So you end up with a really tight and reliable hinge. This linkage is really good for high tolerance parts and pieces, but this is printed on its side. Whereas this one is printed in this orientation. This one is printed in this orientation as if this was on its side. This is really strong, really robust hinge, generally has really good tolerances, but again, it has to be printed like this, which can be limiting because sometimes you have a hinge going up the spine of some sort of apart. But if you ever have to print something vertical like this, you need to be really wary of the overhangs because you cannot rely on slicer settings of it works on my machine. Why doesn't it work on this machine? It's just not robust because different materials, different dyes, everything can change how that interaction occurs. So you want to make a robust print that's really reliable. Ultimately, the hinges that I love the most are really this compliant hinge right here and then this side printed cone hinge. This has really good tolerance and really good mechanical properties properties, whereas this one also has really good mechanical properties, but creates a result that's just really nice. So hopefully that gave you some insight around how to design a different sorts of hinges and the things that you can do with them. The reason this is so important is because there's a lot of applications where you don't want to be reliant on your particular 3D printer. If you wanted to upload something like this to our teleport plugin, where you want to sell a bunch of them, but you don't want to have to run a print farm, you just upload the model and then when a customer orders it, we print and ship it to them for you. If you want to do that, you need a robust model because our machines are not your machines. You want the model itself to be reliable and not have to rely on the slicer settings or the material or anything else. Just design well and all the slicer settings become irrelevant. This model done well, like this, can be printed at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 resolution with any sort of infill and with any sort of material and it will still work just fine. That is the power of really, really good design. So hopefully that helps you out. Have a great day, everybody.